Holy paladins use the power of the light to heal and protect our allies. I'm going to show you everything you need to know in this video for the War Within Season 1 as a Holy Paladin. It's going to be very beginner friendly. However, if you are a veteran, I'm also still going to include everything you could possibly need to know to succeed as a Holy Pally. So this is a guide for everyone. Now, starting off with our stat priority, intellect is the main stat we're getting on our gear. The more intellect we have, the more healing we do. How do we do this? Getting a higher and higher eye level or item level of gear. Now, I will put the secondary stat priority here that should be loosely and generally followed. However, unless you're comparing two items that are the same level, I wouldn't worry too much about this. Speaking of them, however, we have versatility, which increases damage and healing done, while also at the same time reducing how much damage we take. Mastery is unique for every spec. It's Lightbringer as a Holy Paladin in The War Within. Increases healing done by up to X amount, depending on how much mastery you have, of course, based on the proximity of your target. So how close we are to them. Holy Paladins are a really interesting uh, healer, and they're very unique in the fact that they often actually melee, meaning you are very close to the people that you are healing, whereas other healers are more ranged-based. It's not to say we're fully melee. A lot of our spells can be done at ranged, but it's just something to think about. Haste increases how quickly we cast our spells and that we attack. Critical Strike, of course, gives us a chance to do more damage and healing. Now that we've had a look at those, let's take a quick look at what our set bonus is in the War Within. So for us, Holy Paladins, it's called the Entombed Seraph's Radiance. Our two set bonus, Holy Shock's healing, is increased by 10% and its cooldown is reduced. Holy Shock is this spell here. We can use it on an enemy or an ally, triggering a burst of light on the target, dealing holy damage or healing an ally and generating some holy power. Holy power is a core resource as a holy paladin that we are going to be generating and spending which i'm going to be going over in detail later in the video the four set bonus again works on the same spell holy shock holy shock increases the initial healing of your next word of glory or light of dawn and that will stack up to four times so remember i just said that holy shock is going to generate some holy power well, those two spells I just mentioned, Word of Glory and Light of Dawn, are actually two of the spells how we're going to spend our Holy Power. So every time we use Holy Shock, ramping up our Holy Power, we're going to be stacking up how much healing our actual Holy Power spenders are going to do. That sounds complicated? Don't worry. Again, I will be explaining it in full in the rotation part of the video. So now we're going to go through some of the utility spells and defensives, etc. that we have available to us as a paladin. Now, I am specifically saying paladin and not the spec, because these are generally available to all specs in the uh, paladin class. Meaning if you would like to check out the other specs, which I do have guides on, by the way, then which you can find on my channel, these are going to be available on all of them, meaning you don't need to relearn these all over again. We all know WoW is a complicated game as it is. Now, these are the most important ones, I would say, and there are actually others that are available to you as a paladin. So again, do look through your spellbook uh, and just have a look. Once you're more comfortable with the class, I don't want to overwhelm you with information here. On the left, we've got um, a variety of kind of utilities, and on the right are more kind of defensive cooldowns. So on the left here, we've got one here is Repentance. Forces an enemy, I don't know why I'm walking over here, <laughs> forces an enemy to meditate, incapacitating them for an entire minute. Now, there are actually types of enemies in WoW, just to make it even more complex, usable against humanoids, demons, undead, dragonkin, and giants. So if it's like a beast enemy, you can't use it against them, for example. Then we have Divine Steed. Leap atop your charge up to six seconds, increasing your movement speed by 100%. Now, one thing to notice here is that it is usable while indoors or in combat. So you can see here, I'm going a lot faster for a few seconds. I do have two charges and using it again while it's still up will just refresh that charge. So a great movement speed increase we can get while indoors or in combat. We then have the Hammer of Justice on a one minute cooldown, stunning the target for six seconds. We've got Rebuke here, 
interrupting their spell casting, which can also be known as a kick. A kick or interrupt is very, very important in Mythic Plus and PvP, sometimes used in raids, but not as much. You're interrupting your enemy's spell casting. Let's say I was casting Flash of Light, well, that would be interrupted and the spell cast would not go off. We then have our blessings, and actually I'm going to talk about this one first, intercession. This is a battle res. So as a paladin, we can resurrect our allies out of combat, but in combat, on a 10 minute cooldown, we can actually resurrect our allies. Now, if you have another class in your group or raid that can actually also use a battle res, like a shaman or a druid, sorry, shamans can't do it, sorry, <laughs> I don't know why I said that, death knights or druids, for example, can also use battle reses. The cooldown is shared across the group and raid, so you can't use your theirs and then they use theirs and, you know, it is actually shared, um, but it is on a 10 minute cooldown and you can resurrect your allies in battle. Now on to the blessings. We've got a few different blessings. We've got blessing of freedom, blessing the party or raid member, granting immunity to movement impairing effects. A really interesting one is blessing of protection here. Blesses the party or raid member, completely giving them immunity to physical damage and harmful effects for 10 seconds. Now, this will actually remove threat from them, so don't put this on the tank. We've got divine protection, reducing all damage you specifically take by 20%. You can use it while stunned. We've got Divine Shield. Grants immunity to all damage, harmful effects, knockbacks, and forced movement speeds for eight seconds. Again, can not be used if you have forbearance. And it does also cause forbearance for 50 seconds. Now, you may have noticed then that it was greyed out and now it's not. That's because we had forbearance. That's the um, debuff here. And forbearance is also given by things like Blessing of Protection. The same with Lay on Hands. You can now see I can't use my Lay on Hands because we have forbearance. Lay on Hands heals a friendly target for amount equal to 100% of your maximum health. So if you have 100,000 health, it will heal them for 100,000. Even if they have more or less than that, it will do it for 100% of your maximum health. And you can use it on yourself. Um, but again, not if you have forbearance. You can see now we do. And now I can use lay on hands now that forbearance has come. And again, I did say this earlier. There are other things, um, you know, blessing of sacrifice. You've got your auras, etc. You can have one of these active at one time. There's a lot of other things that you should be looking at as a paladin. Uh, a lot of other like turn evil and, you know, sense undead things. But the ones I've shown you are the most important utilities and defensives that you do have in your toolkit. So again, once you're more comfortable with the spec, feel free to just go through your spellbook and kind of see what you have. And also on the, the left-hand side of your talents, the paladin talent tree, that's where a lot of these come from as well. So just have a look through there and see kind of how things work together. So now let's look how it's going to come together into the rotation, etc. that we will be using in PvP. First up, before you actually have the gates open, there's a few little things you want to do. We have our beacon of faith and our beacon of light. Basically, when we put a beacon on somebody, if we heal somebody else, it will also heal the beacon. Wrap a single ally in holy energy, causing your heals on other people to heal that ally for 20% of the amount healed. Healing this ally directly with flash of light or holy light generates holy power. Beacon of Faith is a second beacon at a less effectiveness. Now, you notice here it said that when I heal them directly with a flash of light or holy light, it generates holy power. That's this the here. So some abilities, like our flash of light, like if I use it on myself here because I've got the beacon on, um, will generate holy power. We can have up to five holy power. Some abilities will generate holy power and some will spend it. Another thing we can do um, when we get in is, you know, we can use our Divine Steed. It's on a 45 second recharge of two charges. We can use this to get around whenever we need in combat at a very fast speeds. Apart from that, we have our Crusader Strike, striking the enemy for physical damage, generating one holy power. We have Hammer of Wrath, which we can only use when they are on less than 20% health or in this cooldown window here, which I'll go through with you. And then we have Holy Shock. Triggers a burst of light on the target, dealing holy damage or healing an ally. Two charges generates holy power again. Then we have Divine Toll. Instantly cast Holy Shock, the spell I just mentioned, on up to five targets within 30 yards. After casting Divine Toll, you instantly cast it again every five seconds for 15 seconds. Now, you can see Holy Shock here is lit up. We have a uh, talent here, Divine Revelations. While empowered by infusion of light, flash of light heals for an additional amount and holy light or judgment refunds some of your maximum mana. 
So what you're going to see here is this infusion of light proc. Your next spell is empowered, and it's after you get a critical from Holy Shock. Flash of Light costs less mana. Holy Light, healing is absolutely um, a lot more. And Greater Judgment prevents even more damage. So Flash of Light is this quick heal here we have that if you use it on your beacons will generate a um, one Holy Power. Holy Light is a bit slower, but more efficient. So Flash of Light will have its mana reduced. Holy Light will do a lot more healing and Judgment will reduce more damage. So Judgment judges the enemy, also generating one Holy Power, but it also prevents damage dealt by the target. So the damage they try and do to you will be prevented, or some of it will be. Now that we've gone through how we're generating our holy power, how are we going to spend it? Well, because of our hero talents, which we will be going through, it's going to be using Eternal Flame. It costs three holy power, heals an ally for a large amount and an additional amount over 16 seconds, and it's reduced, or sorry, increased when used on yourself. And that is basically the main way we will then use our holy power. Another thing we can use is Barrier of Faith on a 30 second cooldown, imbuing a friendly target with a Barrier of Faith, absorbing damage for 12 seconds. For the next 24 seconds, Barrier of Faith accumulates 20% of effective healing from your Flash of Light, Holy Light and Holy Shock. And then every six seconds, the accumulated healing becomes an Absorb Shield. So use it, all of your healing you do and gets accumulated up, and then it gets put onto an Absorb Shield. The main kind of rotation we're going to be using is going to be generating holy power and then spending it and then using those procs on quick flash of heal flash of light um and procs etc for um doing some quick instant healing and then using things like judgment barrier faith etc uh more of as like a utility we do also have our auras here Devotion Aura would be the general one i would assume you would go with as a holy paladin where your Allies are going to have their damage um, taken, reduced by 3%. You can enhance that of Aura Mastery, where the damage reduction is increased to 12% for 8 seconds on a 3-minute cooldown. While we're up here, we have a few other little bits and bobs. Rebuke is an interrupt you can use every 15 seconds. And then Cleanse is actually going to remove any poison, disease, and magic effects on your target as well, for allies, of course. Looking more at the hardcore utilities and cooldowns, we have Avenging Wrath, basically reducing Holy Shock's cooldown by 50%. You can use Hammer of Wrath whenever you like, no matter what health percentage they're on. And it's also going to increase your damage, healing, and critical strike chance by 15% by 25 seconds. Then we have our Blessings, Blessing of Freedom, meaning they have immunity to movement impairing effects, blessing of protection, where they cannot have any physical damage or harmful effects done to them. They are immune to pretty much everything. Blessing of sacrifice will basically mean that it reduces damage taken by your ally and you instead take it. Now, if they're trying to burst down your ally, you can do this to instead take the damage yourself and they can really mess up the burst period of your enemy. We've got Lay on Hands, healing them for 100% of your maximum health. And then we've got Divine Protection and Divine Shield. Divine Protection reduces all damage you take by 20% for 8 seconds, and you can use it when you're stunned as well, so that really helps out there. And Divine Shield grants immunity to all damage, harmful effects, knockback, and forced movement uh, effects. Cannot be used if you have Forbearance. Forbearance is caused by um, Lay on Hands, Divine Shield, Blessing of Protection, and it's up here for 30 seconds, basically so you can't just use them all um, one after the other. And another ability we have is Repentance on a 15 second cooldown, forces the enemy to meditate, incapacitating them for an entire minute. And that is the utilities we have at our disposal as a Holy Paladin. It's fairly simple in what we can do with our Holy Power Generators and Spenders and Procs, etc. And then just our huge cooldowns that we can use um, against our allies, but mostly, sorry, against our enemies, but mostly for our allies. So in this build, we are going with Herald of the Sun. It's one of my favorite hero talents, actually, especially for Paladin. Heralds of the Sun develop a deep bond to the sun and solar energy, using it to burn enemies and cauterize their allies' wounds. So we start off with Dawn Light. Casting Holy Prism or Barrier of Faith is actually going to cause your next two Holy Power Spenders to apply Dawn Light on your target. And that's going to deal damage or heal them. For us, of course, we're more so doing healing. 8% of Dawn Knight's damage and healing radiates to nearby allies reduced beyond five targets. So it's a nice way of healing, you know, people around you. Going down the left side, I'm going with Morning Star. Every five seconds, your next Dawn Knight's damage or healing is increased, and that can stack up to five, sorry, ten times for 5%. Morning Star stacks twice as fast while out of combat, meaning 
you know, let's say you're in maybe Mythic Plus, you're waiting to go into an arena, you know, things like this, it's going to be going into combat, like, boom, maximum stacks. And when you're on the move or in any downtime, it's going to be stacking up. And I really, really like Morningstar. Then I like to go for Illum, 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 um, Illumin, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, Dawnlight reduces the movement speed of enemies and increases the movement speed of allies. Not that it's something that's going to be happening very passively quite often. So that's kind of quite a continual bonus we're going to get there. There is Will of the Dawn, but I don't think it's as good. Then we've got Aurora. After you cast Holy Prism or Barrier of Faith, you gain Divine Purpose. Your next Holy Power ability is free and deals more healing, which is really nice. Then we get Eternal Flame. This is actually going to completely replace your Word of Glory spell. Again, costing free Holy Power because everything is only free Holy Power now. Heals an ally and an additional amount over 16 seconds. Healing is increased by 25% when you cast it on yourself. Blessing of Anshi. Your damage and healing over time effects have a chance to increase the healing of your next Holy Shock. Cool. Your haste is increased by 2% for 12 seconds every time you apply Dawnlight. So basically, when our Dawnlight is happening, we're getting some more haste passively. Critical Strikes and Holy Shock and Dawnlight and Light of Dawn is increased. Cool. More crit chance there. Holy Shock and Light of Dawn critical strikes cause the target to be healed for an additional amount. Cool. Crits do more healing. Light of Dawn and Holy Shock have a 15% chance to cast again at 30% effectiveness. Cool. A passive chance for some of our spells to do an extra bit of healing. And lastly, Sun's Avatar. During Avenging Wrath, remember one of our cooldowns, you become linked to your Dawn Lights, causing radiant damage to enemies or healing to allies that pass through the beams, with doing reduced beyond five targets. Activating Avenging Wrath applies up to four Dawn Lights onto nearby allies or enemies and increases Dawn Lights duration. This is insanity. It's going to be linking everyone together with these beams that when they cross them, you know, it's doing extra healing, shoving out loads of those dawn lights onto people, doing more healing and increasing the dawn lights healing while it is active by 20%, which is just a really fabulous way to play around with the sun and the light in Holy Paladin. I absolutely love it. And it's all happening passively. We don't really have to worry about any of this stuff it's just a really cool hero talent tree that is all happening kind of like cool you know while we're doing our, our usual spells now we're going to look at the consumables and enchants etc and there have been a few changes in the warp within so the first thing is we've got a new weekly vault and now every week if you want to get a socket on your gear from the vault you still can but it's called an arubian gem weaver we have it on our helm our wrist and our belt you can also add two sockets now to each piece of jewellery rather than a total of three on your neck using the Magnificent Jeweler setting. Two on the neck, two on the ring, and two on the other ring. For the rest of the enchants, it's the chant of leeching fangs on your cloak. I'll have let you have a guess. It gives you leech. Now, it is only when out of combat, um, so you could put this on in Mythic Plus, but use the avoidance one in raiding. Um, but it kind of really doesn't matter. It doesn't, either one's not amazing. Uh, Council's intellect on chest, that gives intellect. Again, leech on the wrist. Daybreak spell thread on the legs, that actually gives intellect and stamina. Scout's march gives movement speed. It's 250, I think. We can put mastery on our rings and the authority of fiery resolve on our weapon. Basically, when you're doing your usual healing, the Authority of Fiery Resolve will actually heal up to four nearby allies sometimes. Uh, and that's pretty much that, actually. Now looking at the... Oh, have I zoomed in too much here? Eh? I have. I'm going to zoom out. Looking at the actual consumables we're going to use, the Flask of Tempered Aggression is your crit strike, crit, crit chance, and Flask of Tempered Mastery is mastery. Depends which one you need, and if you're really not sure, go with a Flask of Versatility. It's called Tempered Versatility, which is a more general, all-round flask. Feast of the Divine Day is going to give you intellect. Mana Bomb? Uh, Mana Bomb? Oh, God! It's... Well, not Teldrassil. Uh, wherever they bombed that place. Um, Algari Mana Potion is um, the mana potion that you're going to be using, and the potion bomb, oh, that's why I said bomb, of recovery. Oh, my God. Where is it? Ferramore. That's where they use the mana bomb, um, if you know your lore. So, potion bomb of recovery, it basically throws a bomb, and your allies standing in it will actually get increased healing for 
Um, they, they get increased healing received by 5-10% to 10% based on crafting quality for 12 seconds. Enemies caught in the blast will then get fire damage split between them as well. Uh, and then we've got our Algari healing potion. I don't really use that. Algari mana oil, you can now add on your weapon as well. We have got mana oils again, increasing your critical uh, strike and haste. And then augment runes are called crystallized augment runes. If you are using one, they're going to be very expensive on launch. And then sockets. So the culminating blasphemite, this adds primary stats, so intellect, but it also means that if you have different colored gems, you're going to get more crit effect. So if we only have rubies, we're going to get 0.15% crit effect. If we have a ruby, a sapphire, an emerald, and an onyx, it's going to times that by four, and therefore we're going to get 0.60% increased criti critical effect. So you want to have at least one of each gem, and then I would go with a deadly onyx for the rest of your gems. But do simulate your character, unless you're a beginner, of course, then just shove any old crap in there. Um, deadly onyx would be my suggestion. But yeah, if you are simming your character, then do be careful with the gems, but I would highly recommend to have one of each color to start with for your culminating blasphemite. Thank you so much for watching this guide. I hope it was really useful for you in The War Within Season 1, whether it was for Mythic Plus or raiding. If you do have any questions, I'll be happy to help. My Patreon is in the description below, and that is where you can find my Elf UI profiles, which I'll show you in a second. And also, I'm putting together a huge macro list for every single spec that's going to be really useful for you in The War Within as well well i am doing all classes and specs for the war within so if you are new to the channel then please do click this playlist here to check out what else i have which is all of them <laughs> there will also be pvp guides on this channel as well for War within season one so make sure to look out for that this here is the ui that i was referring to as you can see we've got um target frames etc um, left and right and raid frames go in the middle here and then we core is in the middle with an action bar down here chat is behind where my camera is minimap and details etc are here um, on the right all of the plater profiles the voodoo the lvi etc details profile has all been made by me and again you can get this on my patreon should you uh, like it